This lesson is on photorespiration, a special situation that happens for plants because of their evolution in different environments. A reminder of what a plant needs. Plants need to be able to conduct the light reactions of photosynthesis and the Calvin cycle in order to generate energy and use that to synthesize sugars. The light reactions, those were involved with getting light from the sun and getting water from the ground in their roots. Whereas with the Calvin cycle, it was all about getting CO2 from the atmosphere. What structures do you think plants have evolved in order to obtain these molecules, in order to get sunlight, get water, and get air? Well, there's been tremendous variation in plants when you look at different varieties and how their leaves, their roots, and their stomates function because of the demands the environment can place on a plant when getting sunlight, water, or CO2. So let's look at the structure of a leaf. If I were to show you a cross section such as this, there are a couple layers of cells in the middle. On the outermost part is a layer called the epidermis, that's just there for protection. A layer on top of that called the cuticle, which is there for even more protection. And then you have the stomates surrounded by guard cells opening and closing for the purpose of exchange of water with transpiration and with gas exchange, CO2 in and out and oxygen in and out. In the middle of these leaves, you'll find tubes. These tubes are there to transport different materials that are obtained all the way from the bottom of the plant with the roots. One of those tubes is called the xylem. This is how water moves through a plant. And the other is called the phloem. This is how food and nutrients move through the plant. We call them together a vascular bundle. To take a second look inside that leaf, there's a lot going on. There's CO2 going in for the Calvin cycle. There's oxygen coming out as a waste product from the light reactions. And there's water coming out of the light reactions and from transpiration. This is all happening during photosynthesis. So when those stone mates are open on the plant, there is a gas exchange and a loss of water. Of course, these gases are cyclical and can remain in the leaf as well for cellular respiration. Plants can't lose all their water. If it is really, really hot, that's going to drive transpiration high, and the last thing a plant wants is to lose all of its water, shrivel, and perish. So on hot and dry days, plants actually will control the amount of water that leaves their leaves by closing stomates. If they want to, if they want to l prevent that water from being lost, they will close the stomate, and if they're trying to gain a little bit from transpiration, they might open it to further suck water up from the roots. This is an adaptation for living on land so that they don't dry out, but it's created a lot of problems for plants. When those stomates close, you are effectively shutting down the movement of water and the movement of gases. That's going to build up oxygen inside the leaf from the light reactions. As those reactions occur, oxygen is released as a waste product and now it has nowhere else to go. That's also going to deplete the CO2 inside the leaf. The plant needs to get CO2 in from its atmosphere in order to do carbon fixation for the Calvin cycle. Further problems occur because of rubisco. Normally, during carbon fixation, Rubisco is grabbing carbons from CO2, reducing RUBP, and building sugars. The thing is, not only does Rubisco have an affinity for CO2 in photosynthesis, it also has an affinity for oxygen. When there's a high concentration of oxygen, such as when the stomate is closed because the plant's trying to not dry out, Rubisco will actually bond to oxygen instead of CO2. When that happens, it acts as a competitive substrate with Rubisco. Reminder, competitive substrates are substrates that are competing at the active site with another reactant. This will actually cause RUBP to be oxidized and sugars to be broken down instead of being synthesized. So we refer to the situation as photorespiration. We're using the photosynthesis pathway, but instead of synthesizing sugars by grabbing CO2 and fixing them together, we're grabbing oxygen and breaking sugars down like in respiration. So here's what happens when our stomates are open and CO2 is abundant. Rubisco is grabbing that CO2, going through reduction and regeneration, and making G3P glucose. But when oxygen is high, Rubisco grabs that instead. And this again is when the stomates are closed. That will cause Rubisco to, instead of synthesizing a six carbon sugar, break down the five carbon RUBP into a three carbon and a two carbon. And that goes off to the mitochondria to be synthesized 
That's a big loss. We're no longer now generating sugars. We're respiring instead of synthesizing. Sorry, this PowerPoint's having a little bit of difficulty. So one of the impacts of this is we have a lot of loss of carbon. We can lose up to 50% of the carbons that are normally fixed from the Calvin cycle. It's also gonna reduce the productivity of photosynthesis. We're not gonna be generating as many ATPs and we're not gonna be generating sugar. This can cause plants to be upwards to 50% less efficient when they grab oxygen. That's why there's been pressure for different plant systems to actually evolve an alternative, a way to prevent this respiration from the backlog of oxygen in the leaf. There's a couple different ways plants have adapted to this. One way is something called C4 plants. This is where plants physically separate in themselves where carbon fixation happens from the Calvin cycle. This enables them to use different compounds other than rubisco to capture the CO2 and make sure when we get to the Calvin cycle, only CO2 makes it. That different compound is known as pepcarboxylase. And these plants often too have different leaves than you see of typical other plants. Another evolutionary adaptation to overcome this problem is cam plants. These plants separate carbon fixation and Calvin cycle by having them occur at different times of day. At night, it tends to be a lot cooler, so plants are more readily able to open their stomates to have gas exchange occur. But the problem is at night, there's no light. So the time of day is now gonna separate those different reactions. Let me show you this in a little more detail. So with C4 plants, these are plants like corn and sugarcane. They've evolved a better way to capture CO2 that doesn't involve photorespiration. The first step is to fix carbon from the atmosphere. Instead of having rubisco grab it, a different compound called pep carboxylase well. This will store it as a four carbon compound. This is a great adaptation for hot and dry climates. Climates where the plant really isn't gonna have that much humidity or coolness to play in its favor. Here's what it looks like in the leaf of these plants. So here's our normal leaf, the one that has the problem of photorespiration, and here is a C4 plant that's evolved against that. What will happen during the light reactions is CO2 will enter into one cell called a mesophyll cell, and it will be grabbed by pep carboxylate, who will form it into different four carbon compounds. By doing this, we're ensuring that oxygen isn't fixed, but only CO2 is. Once that's captured, that CO2 is then passed to a different cell where rubisco can be sure to always be around a large concentration of CO2 and to perform photosynthesis in a more effective way. And this is because pep carboxylase has a higher affinity to CO2 than it does oxygen compared to rubisco, which has an affinity towards both. And keep in mind, this is a physical separation between the two. Oftentimes, there'll be test questions asking about that. There are two different cells doing each of these processes. We have one cell doing carbon fixation with pep carboxylase and another cell doing the Calvin cycle. Sorry, again, this PowerPoint is having a hard time being converted into a digital format like what I use to record these videos. The second evolutionary adaptation is called CAM. We see this in exceptionally hot and dry climates. This is where we separate carbon fixation from the Calvin cycle by the time of day. Stomates stay closed during the day when it's really, really hot to prevent excessive evaporation, and they open at night to enable gas exchange to occur. Problem is, you can't do any light reactions during the night. So what they'll do is they'll fix all their carbon at night when all those Everything is fine to keep your stomates open, store it, and then during the day when there's light, they'll regenerate all the energy that was used during the Calvin cycle and only do the light dependent reactions. These are plants like cacti, pineapple, and succulents. So just an overarching summary of the two different things we looked at. You can't see it here, but C3 plants, that's normal photosynthesis. The problem there is rubisco has an affinity for oxygen, so rubisco will grab that and do respiration instead of photosynthesis. Two evolutionary ways plants have gotten around that problem. One is with what we call a C4 plant. 
To prevent Rubisco from doing that, just keep Rubisco away from the atmosphere. We have two different cells, two different locations. In one location, an enzyme called pepcarboxylate will grab CO2 and then make sure that there's always a high concentration of CO2 in another cell for Rubisco to grab. With the other evolutionary adaptation with CAM, it's a matter of night and day. These plants will only open their stomates, only do gas exchange at night. That makes sure that we're capturing that carbon, but we can't do the light independent reactions at that time. So I plan is to wait until the day when the stomates are closed to regenerate all of the NADPH and the ATP. I hope this was just a helpful introduction into the three different ways that plants can do photosynthesis, C3, what we've learned before, C4, and CAM. Thank you.